everyone, and welcome back to Solar System Tourism and Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul, where I send my Twitch livestream audience to their preferred destination, providing that they pay with the in-stream currency struts, which they earn by watching. This video mainly covers missions to the moon, but with a catch, uh, with complications, if you will. First of all, I'm using this Lex Raptor 9 rocket. Well, I called Raptor 9 rocket Unix, but it's still got nine Raptor engines at the bottom, and the Lex has one Raptor vacuum engine in it. And we are trying to send a module to the Lunar Gateway. And so that is a new Pioneer module from the USI mod and that will provide some recycling, life support recycling services. I decided that we needed boosters on this, so I slapped on four Ariane 6 boosters out of all things, and I decided that that was good enough to go. So here we go with the four boosters, and because we needed boosters, of course, I decided that we would not have the recoverability on the core. Uh, otherwise, normally the Unix rocket uh, is intended to be recoverable, but in this case it will be expended. So off it goes, and nice view of Cape Canaveral here. The version of the Lex in this case would actually be the crew version. It normally would be just a regular fairing on top, but I've got the crew module on top here even though we're just carrying a payload. The crew system includes a decoupler and escape rockets, which are basically modeled after the lunar descent engines that at that time SpaceX had on their lunar lander concept. So anyway, here we are making orbit. We have the Delta V to transfer over to the moon, so that is okay. And we do make that transfer, but I uh, keep it a little bit short because I wanted to try recovery with this Lex even though it doesn't have the fins that it's supposed to have and everything. I let the payload make its way to the moon on its own. And so here it is, leaving the bay and completing the transfer burn to the moon. So the Lex did not actually get onto a lunar transfer there. So after we do this burn, then I take care of the Lex make sure that at Apoapsis we do a burn to get it back into the atmosphere so that potentially we could recover it, but really, seriously, um, it has no hope. Let me just give you that spoiler there, it has no hope, okay? Meanwhile, uh, this has to do a correction burn in order to get to the moon and eventually does encounter the moon, at which point we do need to rendezvous with Lunar Gateway. And that burn, it turns out, was best done high up rather than close to the moon because it involved a lot of radial components. So we do a fairly hefty burn to capture and move our orbit into a good orbit with relation to Lunar Gateway, Be mainly because the timing was off. If the timing was good, the burn to match with Lunar Gateway would be easy. It'd be about 300 meters per second, but it has to be a particular time of month. Anyway, like I said, Lex in this case would not survive, and here it is overheating. It just doesn't have enough surface area. It does need its fins to help it slow down. And I I don't know about the whole coming back from a nearly lunar trajectory. It is very hot after all. So, yeah. Anyway, with that being done, we continue to rendezvous this module with Lunar Gateway and many little correction burns here and there to make sure that we get to it. And finally we arrive. Lunar Gateway just has its basic modules, the Halo module and the power and propulsion system plus the lander that we had previously used. So, which is just uh, lander cam plus the Blue Origin hydrogen oxygen system with two BE-7 engines at the bottom. All right, so that's docked. So that's what Lunar Gateway currently looks like. Mind you, we have two other stations around the moon, Almaz and Mir. So it's not like we needed another station, but anyway, we have it. Next up, I don't know whether it was my idea or somebody convinced me to do it, but here we are launching the Starship Lunar Lander over to the moon. This is before it got accepted by NASA as the winning bid. And I probably did not intend to have Kerbals inside, uh, Jet Bill and Bob. We're not supposed to be there, they snuck on board. And that would cause 
great problems because it's not just them, there are a lot of Kerbals on board. And that means that we have to resupply a Lunar Gateway to feed all these Kerbals that I didn't mean to send over there. And yes, this will be going over to Lunar Gateway, which will produce some interesting visuals. Uh, so I reserve fuel in Super Heavy to make sure that I can return. And we continue with Starship. Now this is from before quite a few details came out. This is actually from November of last year. But not to say that I would very quickly change my model just because they've decided to make changes. I'll probably wait a little bit before I make my own changes. Anyway, this is hardly going to work properly anyway. It is making orbit though. We have the Delta V for transfer. What we don't have is a whole lot of Delta V to rendezvous with anything. Uh, certainly not to uh, land. That would not work out. So we have to refuel it. And so we send a refueling starship up. And that is what we have here. Mercifully, we only need one refueling. Uh, of course, uh, to completely top off the Lunar Lander, we would need many refuelings, but I just want to get it over to the moon and rendezvousing with something or another, not necessarily landing. If we wanted to land, we would have to do multiple refueling trips. And as you'll soon see, just one is quite an ordeal. So here we go. Uh, the fins are not actuating properly. That's just how it is right now. I was just using B9 procedural wings, so none of that business. Though we do try to bring it back. Uh, that has interesting results, but that's for later. So here we are continuing on to orbit. And we are completing orbit. So the fuel that we're trying to transfer is locked in a tank up front. And the rendezvous is not too difficult. We've got fairly powerful RCS thrusters. And also we use the Raptor vacuums a little bit a few times. Now the problem is that I chose the wrong docking ports. I chose CX Aerospace docking ports instead of the stock ones. And uh, well... They're fidgety. They like a particular rotation and they have particular requirements. I went so far as to try and use uh, this docking camera. And it's possible that one of the issues was just the collider. Uh, the docking port is so close to the collider of the body that that might have caused some interference as well. But here we are trying to dock. It's a nifty view. And this it's not quite centered here this time, but it's pretty darn close. And it just sort of slides off there. And I try to make sure to get the rotation of the docking ports right. That doesn't work necessarily great. And I try again with the docking cam. This time it was dead on, uh, right from the start. No need for corrections, we were just going straight in. Uh, our lateral speed 0.05 meters per second, very mild. And it doesn't really get any better than that. And we seem to have a thing, but you can see it's sliding off to the right again, so it's just really hard to get it convinced to stick <laughs> there's just no magnetism so I've I tried this a few times but ultimately decide that what we really need is completely different docking ports I I, I think I actually get it pretty good here but trying to get the docking port to retract see it's sort of extended the active side is extended trying to get that side to retract uh, is the pain and they don't stay connected. And I think it's because of the collider on the body, colliders on the body of the starships. So yeah. Well, in order to get the docking port on there, I decided to try to use the Shuttle Mark II. And here I am doing basic aerodynamic tests with the Shuttle Mark II. So it is fairly early on in its development. And seeing whether it could possibly land itself after the mission. Uh, flaw here is that I'm carrying all of its uh, propellant and we probably shouldn't have done that. It was rather heavy. 
Also, there's a problem with attaching new aerodynamic surfaces to the wing. I mean, obviously we would want elevons like that, but if you retract the wing like that, the elevon doesn't go along with it. That's the problem. But for the flight test, I decided to try to just put elevons to see if that would work out and maybe we would launch with the wings extended. And so here again, this is just a test with jets, of course. And this time I underfuel it. And it takes off. Pretty high velocity, but not too bad. And while we were up, of course, we might as well take a little tour and fly around stuff, take a good look at things. And finally, we have to come back around to the runway. And landing, well, it sure feels hefty, but the velocity is... Well, I don't know how you feel about landing at about 250 miles an hour, but it is what it is. Uh, so, yep, we had a touchdown. The brakes worked. And all together... I mean, it, it isn't the best flying vehicle ever, obviously. But... It wouldn't have killed the Kerbals on that one. So, that's a plus. So with that, we decided to launch it on a Vulcan rocket because it doesn't need anything more than that for low Earth orbit. And I moved the elevons to closer into the body instead of sticking out on the wings because I did want to fold the wings after all, especially since we we're using this rocket. And I did not want to put fins on the core, so here we are. So six boosters looking good overall. The Shuttle Mark II was designed to be launchable on the Vulcan rocket. It was designed also to fit inside the fairing of the New Glenn rocket. It does have a launch escape system. Uh, the SRBs are on the side along with parachutes and then there's actually a decoupler for the cabin that separates the cabin right, right at the cargo bay line. But yeah, the whole separation of the abort motors could do with some work. They obviously collided with the body. That was not right. As usual, this centaur stage requires a great deal of pitch to actually do its job. In fact, we have to expend it completely in order to get to orbit and use some of the propellant from the Shuttle Mark II. So we're already headed back down, it's done, and the Shuttle Mark II has to try and get itself to orbit. It's not that far from orbit right now, but we just barely managed to catch ourselves. And yeah, it's a quite a lopsided deal. So yeah, not ideal, but at least we made it. And the rendezvous happens. But I forgot about something. You'll notice that we didn't carry any Kerbals on this trip, we're just carrying the cargo. And I was relying on the Kerbals inside the Lunar Lander to one of them being engineers to get the cargo, but I forgot that I hadn't built in a hatch on the Lunar Lander, which means that landing on the moon would not be a great deal either. So, yeah. Major flaw there, and so no engineer could come out to get the stuff, and we just brought the Shuttle Mark II back. So, yeah, that was just a mistake. But, we get to test this, and it turns out that aerodynamically, it's not good. <laughs> so, yep, it's clearly having problems, many problems. Good thing we didn't have any Kerbals on board. Well, again, the well, we got rid of the launch abort system, <laughs> uh, so uh, and there's no parachutes or anything. So yes, good that there's no Kerbals on board. I try and dump everything on it in order to make it lighter because I noticed that our vertical speed was very low, given the fact that we're flipping about. So I guess we were getting some lift from that, but that was futile. Yeah, it just got destroyed. So I went with a larger vehicle. This is the crude Lex on the Unix rocket. And here we have Kurovka, who is technically a tourist, but we're putting Kurovka to work on this mission. Uh, he is a engineer. And Natalie is just a regular Kerbal. 
Both the Unix rocket and the Lex are configured for return. The Lex has larger aerodynamic surfaces and everything, even vertical stabilizers, canards. So it is hopefully very aerodynamic, but we won't follow the Unix rocket back down. It does have the grid fins and the lower fins there. But yeah, we did reserve the fuel and here we are proceeding, rolling around. You know, the big Falcon landing legs, we weren't taking any chances on tipping over there. And actually there are five of those, weirdly enough, that's just how the placement worked out. And here we are doing the rendezvous. Now, as you saw before, with the Lex, the whole top part opens up and we've got our Kerbals sitting in command chairs in there. They're up front in the command chairs and you can see the two docking ports in there too, as well as the KIS container carrying the drills. So, Kurovka gets a drill and tries to grab a docking port, but we have to sort of nudge it over because Kurovka can't really carry it inside the inventory or attach it to himself. And as a result, I decided it would be better to move the Lex closer to the starship. And that is what we do here. Just bring it alongside as tightly as I can. Carefully, not trying to bump the two together. Just very gingerly. You can see the relative sizes as well. The Lex is just a small starship. That's what it is. And so now Kurovka grabs the docking port and slowly moves it into position. One repositioning at a time. We have to remove the previous docking port, the CX Aerospace one. Turns out that one does fit into the inventory, magically enough. Don't know how that works, but... Okay, so we've got that docking port in place. It sort of sticks out enough, hopefully. And we have to put one on the other vehicle. So this is the refueling starship. We have to go over to the lander. Not that we're going to land with it. The lunar starship, we'll call it. And we need to put one on on there. The two starships are still relatively close to each other. I think I did a correction burn to make sure of that. So here we are drifting over there. Actually, I think I have the little elevator system extended there. But anyway, coming alongside very carefully. And Kurovka moves to docking port. <laughs> if we can. That's not much range. Uh, I tried having Kurovka sort of drift towards the location. That didn't work out very well. So, okay. And now we have the spare docking port. And that, for some reason, did not want to go on this deck. And I don't know what the rules are for that, for the attachment. But it did not want to go on that thing. Anyway, job done. We can now dock the two starships together. Finally, and there we go. So, fuel transfer can happen, and we do that right away. So you can see the tank up front there, and there's the propellant transfer. Nowhere near topping it off, as you can see, but that's already a lot of Delta V. I think I decided to send some more of the propellants over from the main tank of the refueling starship. And after that, we still have plenty of fuel for bringing this refueling starship back down. As you can see, about 1,100 or so. And the lunar starship has close to 5,000 meters per second. So 3,100 for a transfer. As you can see, we've got that plotted. Though I had to be very careful not to bump into our refueling starship or the Shell Mark II on the way out. So we've got those targeted. Uh, so after that, after the transfer, we have about 1,800 left, uh, which would not be enough to land. It may be enough to capture into Lunar Orbit and then rendezvous with Lunar Gateway, which is what I plan to do. So now for the return of the refueling starship, despite the dramatic music was an RCS burn to deorbit it, which was tedious, not dramatic at all. Could have done with the dramatic music during re-entry here. We were basically aimed for Africa, 
And I tried to get some lift to make sure that we actually hit land. I, I think I made a video of these uh, re-entries previously, if I recall correctly. This was by way of testing re-entry for the two systems, the Starship as well as the Lex system. I think I call it the Shuttle Mark II when we were trying to avoid it, that it was the Lex that we were trying to avoid. And sometimes I'm gonna mess up and call it the Unix system. The combined thing is the Unix system, we'll just go with that. So here we are, and before I actually do descent mode, because there is a descent mode to make sure it flips onto its tail, it decides to flip around all on its own. So I decide maybe I should activate descent mode now that it's already decided to go out of whack, and well, the tail sorta of is pointing the right way, but it's basically stalled and spinning all over the place. Finally, we get it into a okay situation, but it's tough to control. And I, I don't know what we're controlling from, to be honest. And that causes a problem as far as making sure we can land safely. I think uh, something about the control scheme was off here. The lack of landing legs also probably was not a good thing. And, well, that happened. At this point, I think the game was very confused about what was going on. And so, at 40 meters per second, we land, but it took one of the fins to break our fall. Very awkward. But there we have it. Uh, we had an ablative fin there. So now for the Unix. And we have much more finnage. You can see the little red dot and the blue dot. That's from MechJeb. MechJeb attitude adjustment gives those. And so they're in the right order, right, uh, for re-entry. This is basically the way we want it. Unfortunately, we're coming down in the dark. And now I activate descent mode. And you can see they've switched positions, which they should, so that we can go tail first. And I do that much earlier than they normally would. And I take no chances. We still have the abort system, including the parachutes. The parachutes aren't uh, fitted to carry all of this down, though. Just the forward portion, forward of the decoupler. And so we have to light our abort motors in order to make a landing. The abort motors are basically the same as we would expect for the lunar lander. And so we're using those to make a soft landing here. The Unix has the abort fuel in a tank up front, in addition to the big tank in the back that separates from during an abort. And there we have it, touchdown. And they're safe. So, well, with all that done, uh, two successful recoveries, if you want to call them that, uh, we turn to the mission entering orbit around the moon and rendezvousing with Lunar Gateway. These stowaway Kerbals, in fact, do get their wish and make it to lunar orbit. I assume that's what they wished, because they snuck on board the lunar starship. Maybe they were thinking about landing, but no such luck. So, here we are doing further burns to rendezvous with the target. And, of course, Lunar Gateway is in a very high orbit around the moon. It's not strictly the orbit it really will be in, it's just an extremely high orbit. <laughs> that's that's the best I could do without Principia. So, anyway, here we are rendezvousing, and this is the first time we really got to appreciate the enormity of the situation of Starship meeting up with some form of Lunar Gateway. Mind you, I've added a module to it that's fairly large. The, uh, the actual Gateway modules are smaller than that USI module. So here we are docking, and there it is, a most ridiculous assembly that will persist in the save for some time. Anyway, with that, with those exploits, I'll say thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did please do press like, if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.